What's up guys, welcome back to channel, back to another video. And in today's video, you're finally, finally, finally driving the E92 M3. Now before we actually do, I need to remove a couple things before we get the alignment done, because I need to drive it to get an alignment on it. So we need to remove a couple things on it to make sure it drives somewhat straight and it doesn't damage anything. And then we need to slap on the front bumper, mask the front bumper, mask the fender, because we're gonna take this thing down to LA in the next couple of days. And we want all that stuff masked, we're gonna get any rock chips on that new primer from BMW. So when they paint on that primer, it's gonna be some real good adhesion. Don't mind me, it's my last day of wearing Invisalign. So I'm gonna be wearing it in this video because I'm gonna be getting my final set. I am so stoked on that. Don't also mind me and my in and out shirt. I'm gonna be changing, taking a shower before we head out. And you just don't mind me because I am trying to get things done this morning at the same time trying to get this M3 running. Now I did get to put the M3 on my insurance and thankfully the M3 is actually currently legal. Like it's currently registered and it's like the tags are good for another like four or five months. I dumb self did not realize that the tags are good for four or five months. I, I honestly could have used AAA for a couple of the toes. Um, I didn't even think about that. Normally when I get crashed cars, um, the tags are normally expired. So I didn't even look at the tags. So anyhow, tags are good thankfully. So we can literally, I already put on the insurance so we can legally go drive this thing, which is perfect. So let's gonna go drive it. Um, but before we do that again, we gotta get everything sorted, go drive it, um, get that alignment and possibly even smog it and possibly even register under my name today before we actually head down to LA because I think that would be more ideal. So without further ado, let's go ahead, get all that stuff done so this M3 can finally, finally be driven because this guy, this car has been sitting for a while, just, you know, it feels bad, guys. It's a beautiful car, it's a beautiful sounding car, very well maintained car. It deserves to be driven. guys noticed but I did just close my garage after me and no not just because it's cold but also for another reason which I'm going to show you guys a video future down the road let's just say one of my neighbors caused an issue and uh, yeah that needs to be in a video in itself because I need to warn a couple people about my current situation what happened with me I want you guys to know about it um, so yeah I'm just going to go ahead better safe than sorry just work inside of my garage and just start disassembling this car as much as I can the goal is just to get the front bumper on here mask the, the fender mask the front bumper um, get this mounted so it doesn't touch the wheel and then as for right here this gap over here it's not it, it's like almost the same size as the other side but this side a little bit further back than the other side um we also need to make sure that these wires we can tuck them in if we can't tuck them in i'm gonna take the whole tank out because i don't want the the windshield washer fluid lines to be pierced through with the tire and then unfortunately um we're gonna have to re change the whole harness i don't want to do that so if anything i'm gonna take off the wheel take off this whole water expansion tank and honestly i think that might be a better and safer way to go because if we get that stuff out, when we actually get down to SSR performance, we can actually remove this fender super easily. So that might be the game plan. That just might be it. So for those of you guys who remember, that is the subframe bolt that's ever so slightly off. Like it's off by probably little to nothing and if we just angle the bolt we could probably get it in there but I don't want to do that I want this to be pulled out properly by the frame shop it's not that big of a dent but that little dent is causing that little mishap so we need to pull that out to fix that and while we're at the frame shop they might as well fix all that uh, re like seam welded or something just get all these things fixed up properly in order to do all that we do have to disassemble the whole front end eventually when we get back from LA and uh, we have they have to pull it from the front heat this area up and pull it back to how it originally was now we could honestly just get it cut and re-welded but um, they said it's definitely fixable and I'd rather have the original metal and then just pulling it back on it just making it perfect rather than actually cutting it and re-welding a spot that originally was not welded right there. So that being said also, since I actually took it out to another frame shop and they actually pulled on this a little bit, I just wanna make sure that that bolt right there um, did not get like messed up. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out that bolt and if the frame ends up moving a little bit, we are kinda screwed because we can't actually get that bolt in there. But I'd rather know now than take this to SSR Performance, us doing the rod bear and then when they want to put back on the subframe, the subframe doesn't line up anymore. That would be an absolute mess. The car would have to get trailered back. And obviously we drove that there, so I have to take tickets, fly back here, get my truck, get it, rent a trailer, drive all the way back to LA seven hours, pick up the car, drive seven hours back. So I don't want to go through all that. I'd rather cancel the trip and postpone it if something went up with that bolt. So 
moment of truth. Let's go ahead, loosen up that bolt. Hopefully, hopefully, um, nothing goes out of whack. Hopefully, when we take out the bolt, we can easily just put it right back in there. Now, I'm gonna have the jack right there just to support it because we don't actually have an engine um, hoist right now. Um, so we're just using, uh, you know, just the normal jack on the subframe. So if this comes out a little, I'm gonna take the whole bolt out and then put it right back in. As long as it fits up in the hole, we should be good. All right, the bolt is completely out. So now if the frames actually misalign, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and drop the jack a little. Okay, it's actually not even sitting on the jack. The rest of the bolts are keeping this whole set frame up. So I'm actually gonna put it right back up, just to be safe. Gonna go ahead and put the bolt right back in there. Please God, does it thread? That's the question. Okay, it looks like it's threading no problem. So up here, it's not even a problem. Uh, thank the Lord. That was my biggest, you know, scary point right there. And thankfully, Looks like we're good. So now that we double check that, let's go ahead and figure out what's the best way to keep this from rubbing, because I actually don't have the rear uh, wheel guard, I only have the front. So if anything, we'll put on the front wheel guard, but I don't have this rear wheel guard. So uh, I think honestly our best bet, guys, is to honestly remove this whole tank and just tuck in this wiring to make sure nothing actually gets damaged. Yeah, I think that might be the best move, because also you're gonna have to remove the fender anyways once we get to LA, so we really don't need windshield washer fluids right now. So now that we have the water tank out, guys, when we actually get down to SSR Performance, I can easily just remove this fender to get it painted. We can easily remove the bumper. I'm not, I honestly, I, I think it's not raining, so I'm just gonna try to avoid any mud puddles or anything so we don't get all this stuff dirty. And if we do, we'll just end up washing it. It's not a big deal. But I'm gonna leave off the front weather guard even though we have that. I'm just gonna try to figure out a way if I can mount this to the bumper so this doesn't accidentally scrape against the wheel. If it is too close and it's too risky, then we'll go ahead and put some kind of wheel guard there just to make sure that this doesn't rub against the wheel. But it doesn't look like anything here anymore is gonna rub against the wheel. I went ahead and zip tied it with three zip ties against this positive cable right there. So there's no way that those cables should actually interfere with anything. So that is a huge plus. So yeah, I think at this point, guys, we're ready to put back on the wheel and we are ready to drive this thing out. Uh, this is kind of stressful. It's gonna be the first drive. We have insurance on it. First drive though. Well, technically we drove it, but like first drive on the highway, if you guys know what I mean. Like that's the scariest feeling as soon as you rebuild the car i mean i mean this is the only the only reason i'm kind of like low-key like is there anything on the bottom that's gonna like start flapping i mean this thing looks like it's mounted pretty good everything looks mounted pretty good so we should be good Guys, you know what I just realized? I made another big mistake. Nor is just making so many mistakes. Now there's a reason why the bumper came off the car when I was loading onto the trailer. When I loaded on the trailer and it came off, it ripped the two zip ties off, but I didn't realize it also broke this bracket off the fender. So that being said, this fender only has one good tab, so that fitment's good, but this fitment's bad. I'm not gonna try to go down to SSR Performance and go with a really good paint job on a fender that's broken. So our goal now is to find another fender and swap this fender out and possibly sell this. I'm sure somebody's gonna want it for like a salvage title because one tab's good, one tab's broken, but uh, for me, oh man, $500, guys. I'm gonna try to ask like two or 300 bucks for this, but man, that is a L. <laughs> I'm trying to be so perfect on this car by going all OEM, but I am just getting screwed over left and right. It's all good. It's life, nor you need to relax. You win some, you lose some. It's all gravy in the Navy. I need a new fender pronto. I mean, right now, this can drive like this. I'm probably gonna drive it to BMA European, see if they actually have another fender over there, and probably even swap out the fender while we're over there. Um, we'll see how everything goes. But yeah, let's go ahead and just assemble the rest of the bumper. <laughs> Alrighty, so we just got off the wheel guard on this side. We have the bumper put on here perfectly on this side. We have all the screws over here lined up perfectly. I already test fitted it with the hood. But before we actually head out, are we good on coolant? That's the question. I actually haven't checked this. And we could definitely use a little bit more coolant, not gonna lie. So now that we're good on coolant, we got the bumper, we got everything else situated. At this point, I do think it is time. That's some pretty decent clearance. To cover the new panels. I do not want rock chips on any of these panels. So uh, let's go ahead and just tape that up and tape this up. 
And guys, about 10 minutes later, our front bumper is officially blue. I pretty much masked off all the, the things I feel like rocks would hit. I mean, stuff like this, it's not a big deal. I'm gonna go ahead and just crease that down there, why not? And we just pretty much got the top end of the fender. There's no need to honestly get the rest of the fender because I mean, how is rock chips gonna hit it over there? But yeah, I left the car running to also get it warmed up. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead, head down to smog. Hopefully it'll be ready for smog and hopefully, 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 fingers crossed, the alignment will go through successfully. We can get the thing registered. That is the goal for today, guys. This thing is looking so, so, so good. Honestly, I've missed an E92 M3 for like a very long time. I love this car so much. I'm just so excited to be able to drive it again. And who knows, I might actually put an exhaust on here because this car just sounds so good. Guys, I don't know if I told you guys, but I actually ordered a seatbelt tension to fix that airbag light. There's no actual brake light on this car, but that airbag light will all go away if a seatbelt tensioner was replaced. I ordered one off eBay and they sent me a blown seatbelt tensioner. So I'm gonna try to get a fender, seatbelt tensioner, and I think like the air duct and the wheel guards. I wanna get everything so this car is perfect by the time we get it down to LA. Okay, moment of truth, guys. Putting it in reverse, first drive. Oh man, please, please let this thing drive pretty decently. <laughs> Guys, so I actually pulled up to the post office. Currently, we're almost out of gas. We need to get some gas on this car, but also the oil does need to be topped off. So we do have pretty much good enough oil in there, but I'm gonna go ahead and top it off and see. I'm gonna drive it the rest of the day and see if we have any leaks. Currently, I'm not seeing any visible leaks, but just to be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and keep driving it around, probably go get gas and then head home. If the oil level is in the exact same spot, that means we don't have any like significant oil leaks. We can go ahead and just top off the oil. I'm probably gonna take some oil with us to LA as well, just to be better safe than sorry. But yeah, anywho, next stop, gas station and then uh, registration all that good stuff Guys, we passed. Let's go ahead and try to get this thing registered. Guys, first time on the highway. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I'm super happy we got the smog. There is gonna be a late fee because uh, I pretty much pushed the registration. I should have registered it last, like a, like a couple days ago. Um, it's over a month now, so there's gonna be some late fees, but it is what it is. At least now I feel like, you know, I'm safe to drive it. It performed really well. The temperatures were all good. No weird sounds other um, than this guy right here. I don't know what's wrong with the transmission, but I hear something weird. Like every time it goes into gear, I hear like a clunking sound. Is that normal for a DCT transmission? I mean, it's shifting fine but there is this weird clunking sound. So if you guys can let me know down below, that'd be great. All right, guys, I just got out and I had to pay 1,500 for taxes, fees, and registration. Apparently, there is uh, state taxes and then there is city taxes. And then on top of that, there is penalties for both of them. And then there's just a random penalty for registration. Thankfully, the registration is good to go. Otherwise, I would have had to pay a penalty on that as well. Man, the government makes so much money. Like if you were to sell the same exact car to like two different people in the same month, they both have to pay the taxes on both of that. Like, I don't... It's crazy. Being honest, it sucks. <laughs> All right, guys, because of this fender is ever so slightly off, your man's buying a whole new fender, setting himself back 350 bucks, and I'm trading this one in. But, in the good side is, he actually has a couple other parts, which I'm super excited about, so we're gonna try to get a couple more parts of his E91 that he just got in. I am so hyped that he finally got in an E90 chassis M3. Let's shake him, baby. 
<laughs> bro, you finally got one, dude. The dream, bro. The dream. I've been telling Nick to get one of these from the auction ever since I got mine, bro. I'm so happy you got it, dude. Thank you, bro. So we finally need this fit. But guys, look at that fit me. That's what I'm talking about. So that's why we need this a new looks fender. So smooth, huh? bro, it looks so good. And that's it's a clean title. You know, you gotta take care of it. You know what yeah, I'm saying? At this point, yeah. So uh also the other thing we ended up needing is this intake uh, duct right here. So thankfully this one is perfectly intact. So we're gonna go ahead and grab that. Um wheel liners. We're definitely gonna need to get the wheel liners. This one's uh, a <laughs> eh, regular wear and tear. Regular I'm not tripping. <laughs> it's perfect. Hey, what's going on, Oleg? What's just, up, bro? We just we just washed the title so it looks clean, bro. <laughs> that's it. That's how you get a salvage to a clean title, guys. We are here to finally get this seat buckle. This seat buckle does look good, which is perfect. We need that seat buckle to clear our airbag light. Once we replace that, hopefully we're gonna have zero lights on the dash besides that new airbag light that just came on. Actually, I don't even know if I told y'all about that. Out of nowhere, after smog registration, well, thankfully it came up after smog, but anyhow, um, we gotta check engine light and we gotta get that sorted. So we'll deal with that once we get home. But as for now, uh, let's go ahead and get the new mods. Well, new parts. All right, guys, so we actually got all the bolts out. We actually pulled this thing out. Apparently, the E93s are different. Um, they have like this own, like a different igniter. So that's not going to work, unfortunately. Yeah. All right, guys, we just got the stuff from Nick over there. Now we're actually heading over to Naz, my guy over here. We're doing the alignment. Um, so hopefully, he got this thing to where it's at least drivable. Make sure it's safe enough. I mean, honestly, it drove just fine here, but hopefully, it's going to be 100% safe enough to go down to LA. And so, uh, oh, buddy. So not only do they do suspension, but they actually check all the suspension. Apparently, as you guys can see, my stroke brace is actually broken and uh, is a little bit cracked right there one of the welds cracked right there um the rest of the welds are all good but that also means that it's slightly tweaked which could affect alignment ultimately it got the alignment to basically be drivable but it looks like when they're gonna have to pull the front of the frame to fix that last bolt for the subframe they're also gonna have to pull up the uh, the top um the strut housing at this top of the strut so everything can line up perfectly so i guess thankfully we didn't actually have our framework done just yet because it looks like they need to do that part as well we could have honestly went in there and we had we would have to book an entire another appointment three weeks or another month down from now literally our appointment should be hopefully by the time we get back from la our appointment should be literally the exact same week and we can finally get that full frame fixed so uh thankfully we did notice that and also thankfully nick did get a whole front end of this car so if we do need a cut and replace we can cut and replace but honestly even they said pulling and just fixing that is probably the best way to go because honestly it's not much peeling it's it's very like slightly off and a little bit of a pull would fix everything and that's all we really really need so hopefully we get all that fixed but it looks like also we need a strut bar guys the car is driving so much better i mean they definitely fix everything he told me that i actually left a couple bolts loose uh shame on me so uh everything's tight the car drives amazing obviously well, as soon as we get that new like shock mount thing for the top of the uh the, the, the passenger side everything's gonna be really 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 good in terms of suspension being a youtuber guys is honestly so much more expensive than you guys think literally today i paid fifteen hundred dollars in taxes because the car was already registered and tags were good so i paid pretty much fifteen hundred dollars in just taxes so i could drive this car and then we just spent another five to six hundred dollars on more parts for the m3 to perfect this thing because it is a clean title we want to make sure it's absolutely perfect I'll show you guys what we got exactly once we get home because i'm actually going to install everything that we got other than like the wheel liner as soon as we get home but yeah all i'm saying today was not a day i thought i was going to be spending two thousand plus dollars and uh that's money i don't have but you know you gotta do what you gotta do I'm trying to make them good content and uh, it's definitely worth it because this car is definitely worth it so uh anyways i'll catch you guys when i'm home i want to drive safe so yeah nor driving safe And guys, after $2,000 later, after finally registering this thing, hopefully the title's gonna be coming to us. That is a huge plus. We also got a couple new parts. So we actually got a OEM fender. I mean, this is an OEM fender. It's just, uh, yeah, we accidentally broke a tab. So we got the perfect fender. We also have the light right there. I actually already have that light sitting right up there. An extra one doesn't hurt. And on the road to perfection, we actually got this piece as well that actually sits on the bumper. Um, so this actually didn't come on either of my bumpers. I don't know why, uh, but this is like another Another, like detailed piece this is also another detailed piece i didn't get this on my crash bar so now we're gonna have something to put on our crash bar this right here is what i've been talking about guys so mine is cracked like ever so slightly like right in half so uh yes now we got a new scoop for that and then last but not least this is the piece we've been needing for so 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 long this one has a little bit of wear and tear but nothing too bad now we have the front and back of this side with the front and back for that side so you have the complete wheel liner which i'm actually not gonna be putting on right now we're actually gonna pretty much put all this wheel liners 
off to the side. <laughs> we got a stack of wheel liners back here because we're not gonna be installing our water system until we actually get all this stuff removed. Because I'm thinking when I go down to SSR to make things a whole lot easier, I'm actually gonna take the fender and the bumper off the car when they're doing the rod bearings and take that to SSR auto body so while they're painting the rod bearings will be done at the same time so we get more things done in a shorter time if you guys know what i mean so yeah guys let's go ahead and install the new fender boys hopefully nothing happens to this fender come on nor you got this dude And after all of that, it's all because of this fitment. Now that is the fitment I'm talking about, guys. And honestly, even though this is OEM and that one's OEM, for some reason, this one just sits better too. Like this one sits better from top to bottom, like so perfectly. Maybe that's because this one was already on the car and it kind of fit the shape of the car. I'm assuming that might be it because that one was from BMW and OEM part, but it didn't fit. Like I actually had to like really push it in place to make that one look a lot better. Um, Huh, I don't know, but I mean, I'm pretty happy with this. Now, as far as the air scoop and all this other stuff goes, we're probably gonna replace all of that when we actually remove the front bumper. We are gonna be taking both of those off to get them painted, so when they're off the car is probably when I'm gonna install all of those, so I'm going to throw all those in the trunk. So when we're driving back, we're driving perfect. I'm, I'm so hyped, guys. I'm so excited for this all to be painted, for the raw bearings to be done, and hopefully when we get back, for the frame to be done. But um, yeah, a lot of progress has been done on this car, guys. If you guys are enjoying this build, make sure to smash the like button. I know this is not something that is, you know, in, like an intense build. I I know it's not something that like, oh wow, um, insane news. This is more of me just trying to fix a car that I really, really, really love. And then hopefully when the i3 actually sells through Copart, we're gonna try to pick up something that we've never done before. Like something completely fresh, but at the same time, something that you guys will absolutely love. The i3 was kind of a gamble. You guys didn't like it. Well, you can't blame a man for trying. And welcome back guys to day two. Um, your boy just went to Copart. I'm gonna throw in a little clip right now of me actually going down to Copart. I was like, you know what? Unfortunately, um, my boy Nick at BMA European did not actually have a seat buckle to fit my car um, with that E93, I believe, the, or an E91. I don't know if it's E91 or E93, the convertible one. But yeah, unfortunately, the seat buckle did not work. So we actually ended up going to Copart and we found a manual seat. And when you find a manual seat, you can easily get to the seat buckle. And this is the exact one we need. So I'm super happy. I got this for like 10 bucks from Pick and Pull. That should pretty much get all of our lights on our dashboard cleared up. We do have only two faults right now. The airbag light because of that little seat buckle thing. And then the uh, wash windshield washer fluid tank, which obviously we removed because of uh, the alignment and everything. And also because we're going to have to take the fender off and the bumper off to get painted. So it's easier to get in there, take out the bolts if you didn't have that water tank in there. So the biggest thing I've been meaning to do, I've been driving this car, guys, like nonstop the last two days. Like, yeah, it only has 40,000 miles on it, but it's honestly a joy to drive. It drives so perfectly, so straight. Even with that frame damage, guys, it drives so perfectly. Hopefully, once we get that fixed aesthetically, everything is going to be absolutely perfect. But yeah, guys, we got the car back for the body shop. It did get a little dirty. Uh, I want to restore this to how minty it was when we first got it. So first things first, let's go ahead and replace this bad seat buckle because once we replace that, we can go ahead and detail this full interior. So we're actually sitting in a beautiful E92 M3 on our way to LA getting those raw bearings done. And also, I want to clean up these windows. Like You guys actually ended up telling me that all this stuff all over the car is because of like tree sap or something like that. Now, the second question is, will this get cleaned off? with a polish, because I'm gonna get the whole car polished up anyways after we get that bumper and after we get that fender painted. Speaking of fender, guys, this thing sticks out like a sore thumb. <laughs> but hey, it's, it's perfect fitment, so that's all I care about. But yeah, let me know if I can if I get the whole car polished, would that just come out, or I need to actually get like tree sap removal, and then after that, polish the whole car. I'm pretty sure polishing it should just fix the trick, because you're gonna have to do all this stuff that prepares it. Any hizzles, I really just wanna get all that gunk off all the windows, clean up all the windows at least, and detail that interior, because that interior feels all of a sudden. First things first though, <laughs> let's get that seat buckle out. I am so hyped. So first things first guys, uh, I do wanna clean up the carpets a little bit. Now do I have a brush? That is something I don't, I mean technically, 
I do, I do. So we might need to use a brush actually. So for the carpet, let's go ahead and do that in the end. For the meantime, so we actually get in and out. Let's clean up everything else, like the door panels, uh, the rails, the center console, the dash, everything else. And then we'll clear the lights in the end to make sure we have no lights in the dash, perfect interior for that full satisfaction that I really want to achieve. Guys, this is why I rebuilt BMWs because of, ooh, cars like this. There's something about the E92 M3 that this is one of the first cars that ever changed this channel. And again, like I have the F80 M3 over there and I love the F80 M3, but there's just something about this car, the way it drives, it, it's it's just so much fun. Even this is a DCT transmission, it's not even a manual, it's still a joy to drive. Anyway, anyway, let's go ahead and get into the detail. I'm just so excited because I just can't wait to see this thing perfect. Guys, this interior is looking way too good. Oh my lord. So this is gonna look so much better once we actually remove the carpet. So this carpet's honestly, it just looks super jank. I don't even know if I wanna reuse this. Um, very filthy as well. I'm gonna go ahead and clean all this out, vacuum it all out, try to get everything out of there, including the sides right here. And then actually, once I do all of that, I might have, I think I actually have some floor mats from the F80 and I'll slap it in here. I think it's the same ones. I hope so, I hope so. But anyway, <laughs> let's go ahead and get all this cleaned out. Guys, honestly, that looks 10 times better with just a vacuum, but I wanna go ahead and make those lines. That's what I was chasing. So let's go ahead and spray that foam all over it, agitate this whole carpet. Honestly, it doesn't really need much agitation. Honestly, it might even just a vacuum be good enough, but just maybe up there, a little bit of agitation. But anywho, let's spray some of this good stuff. Let it sit for five minutes, and now it's time to agitate it. And now to make those lines, guys, all you have to do is go like this way and then come back this way, go that way, come back this way. I think, I, I'm not a professional, but I think that's the way you do it. So, I mean, that looks kind of good. I really don't have a steady hand, but I mean, check that out. We got some lines. <laughs> Honestly, this is terrible. I mean, we got some lines. It's not the best lines, but hey, it looks pretty good, guys. And look at that interior now. I mean, oh, you know what? That looks pretty good. I'm happy with myself. Look at that. That's really, really good. Now, everything I've been doing to this side, I've been doing to that side. So, three, two, one. And just like that, guys, full interior complete. This is looking pretty stunning. I'm not going to lie. Now, the only other thing I really want to take care of on this car, again, is all this disgusting stuff off the windows. Um, a little bit of razor blades and a little bit of, uh, you know, elbow grease, and that's gonna come off really nicely. So here is the before, all the, you know, the hard, gunky stuff. This has been bothering me for so much, guys. I have so many on this, like, window that it makes the car feel like baloney schmoney and super dirty because the windows are super dirty. So I'm gonna go ahead and razor blade the entire, all the windows real quick and then wipe all the windows down. I guess it's time for another uh, time lapse real quick. Yo guys, you know what? I think I'm gonna quit YouTube and just become a professional detail. Look at that glass now. <laughs> looks amazing. Guys, literally all I use is a safe glass, glass cleaner, sprayed it all over here, and then I used a razor blade throughout the both windows, and oh my god, it literally looks like glass. It's amazing. It looks so good. Oof, buddy. Well, I guess it's time for the rest of the car, so uh, that's gonna take me a little bit, so three, two, uh, five, seven, uh, three, two, one. Guys, interior check, glass check. I mean, honestly, mechanically check. If your man, if your man knew how to polish paint, this car would look 20 times better just today. It would look like a brand new car straight from the showroom. I mean, look at your man. I just can't emphasize that enough. Like, I'm, I'm pretty proud of myself. Look at me. A lot of times I'm like, oh, no, you can't make something look like that. Honestly, if you just put your mind to it and just buy some stuff from Walmart and you literally just do it, it's not that hard. It's literally like anybody can do it. You just gotta tell yourself you can do it. Now the next thing I'm probably gonna wanna knock out is these wheels because uh, yeah, that looks kinda fugly. Let me go ahead and back out the car so I don't make a mess in the garage. And I wanna just clean all these wheels. The paint, I'm gonna have it probably polished at either SSR Performance or as soon as we get back. So yeah, in the meantime, let's knock out those wheels. Window 
windows, check. Tire cleaner, check. Brake dust, check. Seat buckle, check. <laughs> and interior, check, guys. So the last thing I wanna go ahead and do, obviously, is see if we can actually clear all the lights, guys. That's gonna be absolutely insane. It's gonna be so satisfying. All right, so you have a couple fault codes right here. So an NG1 right here, intake plausibility bank one. So we still have some kind of engine code after clearing it from last night. Uh, that is interesting. And then watch air belt tensioner. Okay, so that is our major. We only have one major issue, which is our seatbelt tensioner. We're gonna go ahead and clear the lights right now. And if that airbag light goes, we are in business, boys. Three, two, one. Oh, buddy, all systems are great in the name of my little babies, yee! Okay, you guys did not hear that last part. That was actually kind of embarrassing. Any hizzles. Yep, I am officially speechless, guys. We have made a transformation. Obviously, the windshield washer fluid, we have the whole tank out of the car right now. But once we actually put that back in there, we're gonna have zero lights. But I mean, hey, nothing on the dash. That is a mission success for today. I am super hyped, and the car, guys, is just looking impeccable. All right, let's go ahead and back this thing up. I mean, you guys don't have to watch the video anymore. Honestly, we have done so much in this video and I'm very, very, very happy in how far this car has come in literally one video. Um, but I wanna go ahead and detail my wife's car and just show our car some love. So uh, you guys already saw everything we did on this car. So if you guys wanna see that car a little cinematic when it's all cleaned up, you guys are about to see it in three, two, one. Now guys, it just needs a spoiler, probably gonna be coming up in the next video.